If I look back on a decision I've made that that I think was in retrospect was not a great decision and I wind up saying, no, I, w- I would not reverse the decision. If I had it to do over again, I wouldn't reverse it because a lot of good came out of it. You know, some bad, and but a lot of good. I can't, I don't really chalk that up to regret. You know, I don't, and I've been really wrestling with this because you've raised very interesting and provocative ideas in your book, which I loved. It fired up my brain, my possibly legion, lesioned brain. Um, and <laughs> the one that I've, always gotten stuck on. And I realize people have all sorts of regrets. The book was very interesting and sort of outlining some of what they are most commonly. We'll get to all that. But for me, there is one thing in my life that I have always, let's say, lamented. We'll start with that word. Um, And it was, not to get too personal with you after seven minutes, but it was um, the night that my dad died. And I was 15 years old. He was 45. It was 10 days before Christmas, 1985. Did not expect him to die at all. He wasn't having any health problems. And the Christmas tree was up. And I I complained to him that my school ring wasn't, it wasn't going to be nice enough. He, He wasn't allotting a big enough budget for the one I wanted. And I was mad. I wanted a nicer one. And we argued over it. We had it back and forth. And he just kind of turned and walked out of the room. He had it with my brattiness. You know, he turned and walked out of the room and I went upstairs and I went to bed and I saw him. I saw him sitting in front of the Christmas tree alone that night, you know, and within two hours I would be asleep and my sister would then be waking me up telling me he had had a heart attack and he never recovered. He, he was dead. And so that, when I think of something like a, a regret that's the thing that comes to mind. And then, if, but if I kept talking about it, Dan, I, I'd get to the point of, okay, but can I forgive myself? Yes, I can. I was a, I had just turned 15. I was a young mm-hmm. girl. I had stupid priorities, which we often do when we're that age. And I grew out of them. My dad would never have wanted me to live with guilt or regret or sadness over that moment forever. The same way I know my kids love me and are good, notwithstanding moments of brattiness. He knew that about me. You know, I can walk myself through all of it. But is it a moment I would have undone? Yes, it is. So, like, I can get there on that. Uh, other than that, though, mm-hmm. I, I can't really answer all those questions the same. Most of the things I'd say, no, I'd still do it because it made me a more interesting person. I would learned lessons from it. I'm more layered. It's something I would never do again. So I did it in a smaller stake. You know what I mean? So I'm really kind of yeah. wrestling with are are people running around with that level of darkness around a moment that I have with that one, but on a much more massive scale? It depends. And I'll tell you why it depends. I know you I know both of us are are trained as lawyers, so we know that the answer to every question is it depends. But it depends. Now, here's the thing. What you were talking about there in that regret, which is very poignant, and the way you dealt with it is is in some ways textbook and how one deals with it. So treat yourself with some combined, some kindness. Do you think that you're the only 15-year-old girl who's ever been bratty to her father? No. Um, disclosing it is a way of unburdening and making sense of it, and then drawing a lesson from it, which I think that you have. But there are two in the architecture of regret, there are two big distinctions. One are regrets of action. That's what you're talking about. And others are regrets of inaction. We regret things we did and we regret things we didn't. Regrets of action are often easier to resolve uh, Mm -hmm. because we can make amends. We can put it in broader context. We can see the silver lining in it. What I found in my research and what comes out in the academic research as well is that most people's regrets are regrets of inaction. They're regrets of if only I take in that chance. If only I'd done, if, if only I had done, if only I had done this thing. And so action regrets are easier to resolve. Um, and one of the things you're doing in, in with that, one of the things that we can do with action regrets is that we can find the silver lining in them. Um, and this is, this is part of how our, this is part of how our brain works. There's a, fa- let's, let's talk about the Olympics. There's a famous example from the Olympics where there's research that's been replicated multiple times where if you show photographs of, athletes on the Olympic medal stand, you would expect the gold medalist looks the happiest, the silver medalist looks the second happiness, and the bronze medalist looks the third happiest. And you would be wrong. 
The gold medalist looks the happiest. This, the bronze medalist looks the second happiest. And the silver medalist is often not looking very happy. Why? <sighs> it is, she it is a counter, it's, a, it's a counterfactual. The, 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 the silver medalist is saying, if only I kicked a little harder, I'd have a gold. The, silver, the bronze medalist is saying, at least I, bat, I beat that schmo who finished in fourth place and got, him, mm-hmm. and got a medal. And so one of the ways that we can deal with certain kinds of regrets is we can at least them. We can find the silver lining in them. We can imagine how things could have turned out, could have turned out worse. But mm-hmm. for many people, the regrets that plague them are regrets of inaction. If only I had done such and such. And those are harder to resolve. All right. So to stay on the same sort of theme of my life, I, I think I have, maybe this is why I don't have very many real regrets. I have almost, I have none. I have none of the inaction ones, none. And there is a reason for that. And it relates to the story I just told you. If there's, if there's one silver lining to losing a parent at a young age, or even anybody who's very close to you, it is that you, it's a reminder that stays with you forever. If you're paying attention to lessons that it's not a dress rehearsal, it's time limited. You don't get do overs. Every day's a blessing. No tomorrow's promised. All of the things. And if you can internalize that, it does make you shake it up in your life when you recognize this situation is not working for me. And I look back on my own life. It's like I, I got out of my first marriage because I realized that I left Fox News because I realized that did things work out well for me at my next job? They did not. But I actually had a lot of great experiences at that job and learned a lot of lessons and met a lot of nice people. Some of the skills I developed there I use to this day. I've taken very big risks because I know that there's you're not going to get another chance, like better to try and invite change and fail than not to try at all. That's generally been my approach because of losing my dad young. You're right. To to have not tried at all would be very hard to accept. I mean, in in some ways, Megan, you are (laughs) verifying the the core idea of this book, which is that regret makes us human. All of it, all of us experience it. But if we process it correctly, it makes us better. It, It leads us to make better decisions. It allows us to learn and grow. It, what what concerns me is that a lot of people aren't don't do that. What instead what happens is they they lead a life of delusion by saying I have no regrets and never look backward, or they become so hobbled by these negative feelings they don't know what to do about them. Mm-hmm. And if we, to me, if if we can model the approach that you have taken, which is built very sturdily on a rich bodies of science, we can use this emotion to actually find the way to a better life, which it sounds like what you have, which sounds like what you have done. <laughs>